Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is mighty God our reign from heaven above and near. The power and love our God is the mighty God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom and power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to thank all of you who will continue to stay with us here at uh, uh, Having Breakfast with the King. We, I thank all my Blog Talk Radio family and my new family, uh, my King's TV family, and uh, thanks those who just joined us. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this thing that we're on is from God and it's and it's and it's so powerful that we're reaching the whole world immediately. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's called Internet TV. And I just thank God that He has allowed us to be a, a small part in the in the, the one body with the many members Amen. to 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 build and advance the kingdom of God here on earth. Amen. And as I said to you before that we are now getting ready to promote our next book called Pornography, The Other Woman. And the reason being is that because we here at My King Service, Pentecostal Church of God, we are a, a no holds bar church. We're going to talk about the things that no one else wants to talk about. We're going to say the things people are afraid to say. We're going to do what God says for us to do. So... Understand that at the end of this program, I'm going to give you the information to not only to join our My Kings TV family, but also to pick up your advanced copy of Pornography, The Other Woman, mm -hmm. just for a few little excerpts from the book. Pornography, The Other Woman. Mm -hmm. But what is pornography? The origin of the word pornography reveals a great deal about its influence through the ages. Mm -hmm. It derives from the Greek word pornographos and simply means the writing of prostitutes. Mm -hmm. Originally, it described prostitutes in their trade, but later came to refer to the writings and pictures intended to arouse sexual desire. Mm -hmm. Pornography draws to the surface, the desires simmering within and in a decadent society. Those lusts bear the fruit of horrible sexual crimes, mm -hmm. adultery, homosexuality, bestiality, rape, child molestation, and incest. That's why so much stuff is going on in the world and in our churches because of these things. Pornography degrades that which God created in his image, according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. Mm -hmm. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Mm -hmm. And in Psalm chapter 8, verse 5, it brings man, mm -hmm. created a little lower than the angels. Mm -hmm. For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. And in Jude 10, down to the level of animals. Mm -hmm. But these speak evil of whatever they don't know. Mm -hmm. And whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts. Mm -hmm. In these things, they corrupt themselves. Mm -hmm. Pornography is an intricate part of false religion, mm -hmm. which sets up man as the object of worship. And the pagan religions of the ancients had their Obsculus, mm -hmm. which were phallic symbols, mm -hmm. symbols of penises, mm -hmm. temple prostitutes, and fertility rites. In the end, this is just a form of humanism, the worship of the human body and mind. Mm -hmm. Humanism, according to a former president of the American uh, Humanist Soci Association, is a polite term for atheism. Mm -hmm. Simply put, humanism is man trying to be God. Mm. So that takes us to our lesson for today, the power of prayer. Mm. 
the power of prayer. Hallelujah. Now, most might be overwhelmed by the occasion to address a world ruler or leader. Such a concourse would be punctuated, no doubt, by great respect and decorum. Mm. An impressive rise in the statue of one's reputation quickly following. It then is an honor beyond comprehension to realize the privilege of the lowest of men to receive at any instant a personal audience with the King of Kings, creator and sustainer of the universe and God of all glory. Hallelujah. Before commencing this lesson on prayer, consider the monumental impact of such communication upon individuals in the scriptural past. The prophet Isaiah saw him and repented bitterly. The apostle Peter beheld his glory and withdrew in humiliation and shame. And John the beloved, hearing his voice, turned to look and fell as a dead man. Prayer is indispensable to God's blessings. Nothing of abiding or eternal consequence is accomplished without it. And yet no power so awesome and infinite has been so freely extended nor so infrequently experienced by man. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter six, verses one through eight, in the year that King Uzziah died, mm. I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up, mm. and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. Mm. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. Mm. And one cried to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Mm. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken from the tongs up from the altar. Mm. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, mm. this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away mm. and your sin is purged. Mm. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. It goes on to say in Luke chapter five, verses four to eight, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and, and said to him, master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. Mm. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. Mm. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. Mm. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Mm. And then in Revelations chapter one, verses 10 through 18, it says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the alpha and the omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches, which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Titheria, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Lacedicia. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. 
His head and hair were like wool. Mm, mm, mm. Let me say that once again. His head and hair were like white, like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He has in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in his strength. Mm. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Mm. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. Mm. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Let's talk about prayer today and the power of it. First of all, let's talk about what it isn't. First of all, it is not an inherent right. It is not an inherent right. Now, some people believe the fact that since God created man, it was sufficient enough to compel him to hear and answer prayer. Others are convinced that being a true believer obligates the father to respond favorably to prayer. Now a leading 21st century charismatic preacher once spoke of a true believer's bill of rights specific and alienable rights guaranteed in scriptures, which if the Lord neglected, true believers might demand in the name of Jesus. God neglecting his covenant promises is an attitude that is totally destitute of spiritual discernment. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, no one has the right to demand anything from God. And such an attitude borders on sacrilege. Mm -hmm. It is not casual in nature, talking about the power of prayer. Now the irreverent attitude demonstrated by some men toward God during prayer is evidence of a lack of spirituality or a disregard for his holy character. Sadly though, many who should be filled with awe are just merely awful. Psalm chapter four, verses three and four says this, but know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Be angry and don't sin. Meditate within your heart, on your bed, and be still. Mm. Selah. Mm. And that means calmly think about that. Mm. Since we know what prayer isn't, let's talk about now what it is. First of all, it is the sacred communion with Almighty God. An entreaty is involved in the power of prayer. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. An entreaty may be spoken. Prayer may be uttered by the mouth. Evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Mm. Psalm chapter 55, verse 17. Prayer may be inaudible. It may be from the heart. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 37, verses 4 through 6, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. An entreaty may be unspoken. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 19, verse 14, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And an entreaty may be unspeakable. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself 
make intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts know what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Understand that a response is always included in prayer. But listening and waiting on the Lord is required in prayer. That's what happens to a lot of us. We don't want to wait for a, a response from God. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 40, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. Isaiah 40 and 31 goes on to say, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Bible also goes on to say in Psalm chapter 46 and verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. And number two, I want you to understand that God speaks to the heart in response to prayer. According to 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 through 12. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. Mm -hmm. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. Mm -hmm. Then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord and behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. Mm -hmm. But the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not the earthquake mm -hmm. and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a small, still voice. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Through divine providence, God often answers prayers. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this according to Psalm chapter 23, verses 1 through 6. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cups run over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. And we know that all things work together for, to, for good to those who love God, mm -hmm. to those who are the called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Now understand that appealing for God's blessing through prayer. Now, the model prayer or the Lord's prayer is the Lord's response to his disciples' request. Amen. Without question, the best known and most often repeated prayer in history, Amen. it embodies the perfect submission of man's affairs to God. According to Luke chapter 11, verse 1. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, Teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Mm -hmm. Matthew 6 verses 9 through 13 goes on to say, In this same manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name. And I'm going to now take this time as we uh, come to a conclusion for having breakfast with the king that we have created and God has given us the wisdom to create My King's TV. It is a platform for those who don't have a place to go to speak or teach the unadulterated word of God and want to get their word across to all the nations. Okay? If you want to join this team, if you want to join our family, go to our website and check us out at my-kings-service-tv-news-worldwide-network.com where you can email us at mkspcg1 at gmail.com or you can even call us at area code 240-544-2041. And as I said before, God has uh, inspired me to write this book, Pornography, The Other Woman. And I'm telling you, it is going to change ministry as we know it today because we need to teach those things. And I'm just, I am, I am asking everyone mm -hmm at the sound of my voice and that can see me worldwide, that to purchase an advanced copy for your, for your book club, for your church service, for your Bible study, just for your own personal. And you can also get your advanced copy by going to our website. And I'll give you that information again. It's my-kings-service-tv-news-worldwide- dash network.com and you can also email us at mkspcg1 at gmail.com and you can also call us at 240-544-2041 and I'm just going to leave you with this these words hallelujah I'm going to leave you with these words from my my favorite my favorite scripture and my favorite scripture comes out of Matthew chapter 7 and it's verse 13. It says, Enter ye in that straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. It goes on to say, Beware of the false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Mm -hmm. And this is for God I live, and it's for God I die. For truly the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. God bless. Stay tuned. As you get ready, as we get ready for our service, stay tuned because it's going to be a powerful, powerful, powerful service because there is a word from the Lord because we have to seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. Mm -hmm. God bless and stay tuned. Amen. Mm -hmm.